Hello and welcome to the Slingshot channel. Today I want to show you a, a very iconic and groundbreaking crossbow design that has been almost forgotten because it's out of production now for probably longer than 20 years. The Barnett Commando Rake Barrel <laughs> uh, crossbow. Let me show you its features. I know, I know, the t-shirt is pretty tight, <laughs> but that is because I'm running out of loose fit shirts since I'm in the middle of my 12-week workout plan and just finished the mass phase and I think did pretty good on that, don't you think? <laughs> and I'm using this secret muscle powder from Germany called Shape Up. And if you want to know more about it, I'll attach some explanations and, uh, and, and links to the recent studies to, at the end of this video. So Barnett at that time was uh, actually a company that had places and factories in the UK and also in the US, but later on they closed the UK factory, I think in 2003. But to me, it seems like this design clearly is the best one that they brought out and they enhanced it later on a little bit, but this was really a big step since it made cocking a crossbow a lot easier than before. Since, you know, usually you just have to step down on a stirrup and then pull up, which is very uncomfortable on strong crossbows. And this one, you simply do this by breaking the barrel, just like you would on a spring-loaded air gun. So I was actually very happy that I found this one uh, on a German auction platform. And um, it actually came in working condition, but it was in need of some love. So basically what I did is I cleaned everything, then I uh, redid the middle serving here uh, since the string was really, really damaged and uh, the middle serving was really broken. And also I polished all the brass parts, uh, which I think now it looks better as new probably. <laughs> and I also sighted it in and shot it and I, can, I think it is now as good as new, really. Um, it is in the original state like sold from the German distributor at that time, the company called Herberts, and it even came with all the manuals and even a full uh, vintage Barnett brochure. I put all the links to the scanned documents for you down there, so I'm giving this to the community, so because I didn't find anything previously. So as I said, the brake barrel function is actually pretty simple. Let me put the string out of the way so you can see it. As you see, there are some some uh, steel balls here that are actually locking the uh, thing in place so that it doesn't open accidentally and it runs in a rail so it uh, will always be perfectly smooth this is clearly an early model because it has no protection above the strings later models had like end caps made from plastic to be more easy on the middle serving uh, but I think the first models didn't have that. At least in the pictures in the brochure, the models didn't have any plastic caps on them either. So I think this was a later development. In any case, um, the, the weapon originally came with iron sights and there is even the original front piece of that attached to the weapon here. Uh, and now of course there's a scope on it and it's a Herber uh, scope, which is the uh, German exclusive distribution company at that time. So, as you see, the mount is a little awkward, but that's actually the way how they shipped it, because there is a screw inside here that allows you to actually uh, change the, uh, the horizontal position of the scope a little bit. In any case, so you could cock it like so, just by breaking the barrel. And there are several ways how to do this, and I'm going to show them to you now. The official method is actually to put this thing down on the ground with the nose, and then just use your body weight to do that. Um, and um, of course I'll be doing this, but I'm using a piece of wood to actually secure it, since I don't want to scratch my crossbow. So what you do is you lift this up like so, and then you simply break it down like so until it engages. There is an auto safety that is now engaged. So I can now safely put in the arrow or the bolt and shoot. Actually, it came with the vintage bolts, but I've been making my own bolts so to save them since I don't really want to damage the collector's value. So these are modern type bolts, 21 gram, and I shorted them, shortened them so that they um, actually match the crossbow. So, and this is the auto safety. And if you want to set it on fire, simply push it in. And then you can shoot. And the way how you do this is just like on any other crossbow, 
except that you have this thing that actually helps you clamping this nicely in like so. The trigger actually is not a modern trigger. So it has about I actually think that like an inch of creep or so before it actually shoots. So if I move in, now this is our creep and now comes the shot. It's it's a really not a modern trigger, but it, it works. I mean, so what is it there to complain about a crossbow that's been designed like 25 years ago? <laughs> so the second way how to cock it is simply putting it against your upper thigh and then you take the hand with the palm facing outwards and you push in like so and hand and, and hand and then you hold the weapon here and then you break it down. It's not easy and it's actually not comfortable on your inner thigh. Pretty much my thighs are probably much more thick than uh, for an average person. But you can cock it that way without putting the weapon down to the ground. Okay, auto safety. And... <laughs> now the third method is of course to hold it in the front like here and then break it down like so. Yeah. And this also works. It's a bit scary. I know that there is no bolt in here, but it's a bit scary just because, you know, your hand is in the line of fire somehow. <laughs> Bang. To find out the energy of this bow, although it might have lost some power, I don't think so, but it might have lost some power in all these years, but I'm going to shoot it over the FX Airguns Radar Crony and we'll find out. Okay. This is the result. 65 meters per second, 213 FPS with a 21 gram bolt. And that is about 44 joules of energy. Now the uh, Commando was also shipped to the US and I think there was also a 175 pound edition and even just for the US a 220 pound edition. And I guess those models uh, have been more powerful but also harder to cock. Okay, so what is my verdict on the crossbow? How, how does a crossbow like this that's been like 35 years old, how does this compare to a modern uh, crossbow? Well, first of all, it's generally too heavy since it's been made from like cast iron or something. So it's completely solid and I think you can use it as a club to defend yourself. But of course, a modern day crossbow would have been made with a plastic material or so on. It would be far lighter or maybe aluminum or something. But this is really heavy for a short, small little crossbow. And then I also think that a modern crossbow would have probably a longer power stroke and also would probably have like a compound bow even though i have to say that barnett later on released the commando 2 which had all this so they already included like a compound uh, bow limb uh, which made it a lot more powerful and also they enhanced the string life by making this like cushioned i think the commando 2 even had rollers for that so probably the wear on the string was much much less also of course because See, a, a, a crossbow with a continuous bow limb is cheap to, uh, to, in, to manufacture, but there's always tension on the string. So there is a certain amount of chafing that definitely will shorten the lifetime of your middle serving. So a crossbow like this is cheaper, but it needs more constant service. Not a big deal if you know how to do it, but still it's a disadvantage. Um, of course, also uh, it would get a better telescopic sight, I'm sure about this. And also, I think that um, what this would immensely benefit from would be a front handle that it is attached like here. So it would make it so much easier to cock it without putting it down on the ground. Plus also, I think that a modern crossbow needs a magazine. <laughs> and that's one of the reasons why I bought this one since I'm designing a new full-size crossbow that hopefully will one day do all these things that this one here lacks but include the original very easy cocking motion. And I've even made a prototype, I presented it to you uh, already, but here it is again. Of course, it's made from wood and I reinforced it a little bit with steel because I'm tinkering with my uh, prototypes until I'm happy with their performance and just the wood wasn't stable enough, so I need to make it a little bit thicker. Uh, this one has a, an exchangeable magazine, so you can remove the entire arrow magazine and uh, put a new one in. And also, as you see, I attached a front handle, even though this is fairly bulky and definitely not something that you would find in a final design. 
Also, uh, what you can see is uh, that the magazine is from below, so that the line of sight, even though I haven't really attached the telescopic sight, is short. But the way how you cock it is actually the same thing as on the, on the Commando, but of course uh, it is much easier since I have the front handle. So this only has a fraction of physical effort that I need to invest in it. And this one, the trigger is probably even worse than the one on the Barnett because it's one, my one piece trigger here thing. And, uh, but hey, it works. <laughs> so I'm working on this and uh, it will definitely take a lot more iterations until I'm coming out with something that is uh, sellable. But I'm working on this because I believe that now we have the Stinger pistol size repeating crossbow and we have the carbine size adder, but I think the world needs a full size, full power uh, crossbow uh, with a repeating function. And I think this cocking method is the best one that comes to mind. The pump action one from the adder cannot be employed because of the long power stroke, since otherwise only Dirk Nowitzki would be able to manage it. So, a great crossbow and a proud piece of my collection. <laughs> I've actually already ordered a Commando 2, uh, also a vintage collector's item that I will compare to this one, since I love the history of things and specifically the history of muscle-operated weapons. Um, but I think it is uh, great to have this thing in my collection. Uh, and uh, I still believe it's a groundbreaking development that I'm actually sad that Barnett actually gave up on it since I love this concept. <laughs> and I hope you do too because that's it for today. And, uh, thanks and bye bye. <laughs> okay, shape up the secret muscle powder from Germany as promised. Um, well, first of all, I did a workout uh, thing with this in 2017. And it actually was a great success. I mean, the only thing is I was dieting the whole time. Other than the, st the studies suggested, I wanted to lose some weight while uh, getting into shape again. And it worked, it worked. I, I really, really had very good results. But this time, since I did not work out for like two years, I decided to first eat and work out with the shape up and then go on a diet. Right now my mass phase is over and I'm really happy with it so far, <laughs> but um, now the diet will follow. I, but I have to say that the results I'm getting from just six weeks of workout, working out five, five days a week for only about 45 minutes a day, 21 sets, hard work, but, but still, the results are phenomenal. I mean, don't forget that I am 55 years old, so not exactly in my prime anymore. <laughs> still, uh, I think that this, needs to be on a doping list. Uh, it's going to be hard to do because it's just collagen, right? It's, just, it's a protein. <laughs> and and uh, it will be very hard to actually prove that someone is using it. But I believe that once the uh, athletic industry discovers it, uh, every athlete will take it just because the results are, are super. And it's not because it's a protein, because you only take 15 grams a day. And that is, they give you this little thing here. That is all. One of them in the morning, and that's what's making this causing the effect. And I asked the guys from Jelida, which is actually right uh, next door here, um, and asked them, the scientists from, from the company who makes it, what the secret is. And they said, it's, it's not like a protein powder, like, uh, I don't know, whey protein powder that is uh, made from milk. This is actually made from animals, from pigs, actually, from pig skins. And they are cutting the collagen uh, chain mole molecules in a way that the human body thinks it is its own stuff. And that definitely makes the muscle cells grow, just because that's the way how the body obviously communicates to its muscle cells that growth is needed for survival. And therefore, this little trick actually causes this effect, since 15 grams a day in my diet is almost irrelevant. So it is not used as a protein source, it's used as a stimulant. So it is very much comparable to an anabolic steroid, just it, it hopefully doesn't have any of the side effects. So far, actually, I felt nothing, just that I have massive gains. <laughs> now they also have studies about it. When I started three years ago, they had just one published study. It was a double-blind, uh, randomized, prospective study amongst older people. Uh, and they had phenomenal success. I mean, these old people started to work out for 12 weeks and the control group got a placebo and the other guys got the real stuff. And the people that used the, uh, 
the shape up actually gained like five kilos of muscle while losing five kilos of fat. So they ended up weighing the same but just looking completely different and of course being much more strong. So, um, but of course, usually athletes aren't uh, old men. So uh, they did some more studies now, actually three new studies came out and I put the links uh, down below for you. Uh, I think the most significant one is when they've been giving it to young sports students. Uh, people that have been around 25 years old, so typically younger than 25, and they already have been very fit. So they gave them the stuff and actually the placebo guys pretty much gained nothing just because it was their normal workout routine. So why would they gain anything? But the guys that took it actually exploded. So they gained a lot of muscle mass for people that already have been very fit. So I think this is just stuff that belongs to be on the doping list. Currently it isn't. <laughs> if you're living in Europe, it's fairly easy to get it. You can buy it in my store, or you can find it on Amazon. Just don't use any other like standard collagen stuff because then the molecules might not have been cutting the, uh, cutting the right way. And if they're not matching, then the effect won't be there. They will just have the same effect as any kind of whey protein powder. Stuff costs around 40 euros and it will last six weeks.